Hey guys, Isaiah here from Goo Gaming, and today I'm going to be talking about Vi Val's deck list. He played Prank Kids and got top 32 of the remote YCS. Uh, his list kind of looks like the list that we made a couple weeks ago on Prank Kids, so we're going to get right into it. Before we get into the video, make sure you guys subscribe. We're almost at 500, and once we hit 1,000, we're going to do a massive giveaway, and you definitely want to be a part of it. So make sure you're sharing the videos around, telling your friends to sub, so you can get that cool stuff. Let's get into the video. All right, so jumping right into the video, he's playing all the Prank Kids, he's playing 15. All three, 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 three. Uh, he just wants to maximize seeing at least one of them in his hand. A lot of people are cutting back on Roxy. He's only playing one, some people playing two because they're playing the Brave stuff. But I think he just really wants to make sure he sees at least one of them in his hand. It doesn't matter so much if you open more than one. But I just think he really wants to see at least one of them in his hand. Under his spells, something really interesting is he's only playing one of each. Um, a lot of people are playing at least two Pandemonium, one Pranks. That's always going to be a thing and two or three plays. I think his reason for this is they're all searchable, so if you don't see the one in your hand, you can just search it. I mean, place is just kind of like having a 16th card in your hand, or 16th prank in your deck. Place is just so good going second at chain blocking and everything, so I, I could definitely see at least playing two. I really like this card at three, but obviously he did really well, so. Uh, the one pandemonium kind of confuses me because if, uh, he's not even siding the second one, so like if you do get the pandemonium and you have to use it because like they ask you or something, then you just don't have it for your butler play. And then if like they cosmic it in the standby phase, which a lot of people are doing right now, then you just, you don't have it. Like you don't have pandemonium. So how do you make your fusion? I mean, I guess you can link climb an access code, but like I think this card definitely needs to be played at two. Moving on to his hand traps, which I can definitely see why he did really well. Um, He's not playing droplet in his list because he's main decking so many hand traps, playing three ogre, three ash, three Baylor, and three nib. Um, Ogre and ash is kind of a given right now. They just hit so much in the format. And then Valor, I thought this could have been Lancey in his main deck, but Valor I can definitely see. I think it's a really okay card right now. It hits Needle and stuff like that. Uh, the Nibs and Obvious. Nib, it's like a lot of people don't play Nib in this deck because they're afraid that it's going to conflict with your Pandemonium. If you're going second and you open this card, and mo most of the time, if you're, especially with how many Andres he's playing, he's probably got a really high chance to see more than one. So he's probably going to kill them because he can just Nib and Ogre them or Nib and Ash them and stop their plays. And then he can just make the big prank board kill you or get you close to death through it. Moving on to his Brave Engine or Adventure Engine, he's playing the normal three water check, three right, one Draco back, one Faithful, and one Griffin Rider. This engine is so good in the deck, and if you're not playing this in the deck, you're really, really behind. Just being able to chain block plus the extra negate is just so good in this deck. And if you are going second and you open like right plus water check, then you can just extend, go on, and you can make access code and everything and just kill your opponent. And something I noticed a lot of people are cutting out of this deck is the Fusion Destiny package, and we talked so highly of it before. Um, especially in his deck where he's only playing one Pandemonium, this is going to be a lot of um, plays after turn one. After turn one, he will be able to just, you know, float with DPE, especially if his Pandemonium gets gone and he, they, he clears board. He just float his DPE until he can get back into the game. And then he's playing one Call by the Grave. It may be a math thing, but I feel like if he just cuts the one Call by the Grave and just plays a 40 card deck, his deck's going to be fine. But a, a lot of people are playing more hand traps now, so I can definitely see it. Um, in this deck, it doesn't hurt so bad to get your Ogre Faithful because or your Faithful Ogre, because you still do your normal prank kid combo. But if your first kid gets, like, Ash, um, or your Doodoo gets Ogre, it kind of hurts really bad. So I can definitely understand why he's playing this. Moving on to his extra deck, he's playing the one Meow Mew, obviously, three Doodle Doo, one Bow Wow, one Roaster, uh, one Rocket Ride, one Weather Washer, and he's playing one Battle Butler. This could be back to the one Pandemonium thing. He doesn't play more than one Pandemonium, so he doesn't need the other one. And he's probably, he's probably recycling his Meow Mew every turn, which I don't see why he wouldn't, because if you don't, then you're just behind but other than that's a pretty standard uh, a lot of people aren't playing roar and rooster but some people are starting to play it more and with his list he seems like he's scared of back row deck so he's definitely playing it he plays a one link spot or anaconda for that the plays with fusion destiny and the tokens he's choosing to play nightmares he's playing phoenix and unicorn uh, i've seen a lot of people cut these and play more prank kids monsters i like these cards but i prefer to play more prank kids monsters he's playing the access code and he's playing dp more or less a pretty standard extra deck. Side deck. Has a lot of back row hate. He's playing Red Reboot, Feather Duster, three Twins, and three Cosmics. I don't know if he's more scared of back row decks or if he's more scared of the mirror. Because these six cards are pretty good against the mirror with their butler. He's also playing cherries. We're just going to go ahead and skip on to cherries. He's playing cherries in his deck, but he's not playing anything that hits other decks. Like Access Code and Link Spider, I guess. And Verte and DP. But if I'm playing this card... In this deck with his list, it's probably only going to go in in the mirror. Like, yeah, you can hit the DPE, but the DPE is not that big of a deal against your deck. 
So like, if I'm going to play this card, I would at least throw like a Hulk or something in because I just feel like it's a wasted space. And he's playing cross out in his side deck. Again, he's I think he's just scared of hand traps. So like, if he does get to go first, maybe he just takes out nibs and puts in cross outs. That's what I can see. Um, I feel like there might be some better cards you could do, but that's not a bad idea. And he's playing two Lancia. I think this could be bumped up to three. Um, I could see cutting one of these and playing three Lancia. But yeah, guys, that's his deck profile. He did really, really well this weekend, finishing in top cut. I like the list a lot. There's a few changes I would make, but I think he did really well with it. Obviously, he's on to something. Make sure you guys subscribe. Again, we're doing a thousand sub giveaway. It's going to be a huge giveaway. You're really going to want to be a part of it. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Thank you for stopping by the video. Make sure you like and have a wonderful day. Peace.